Ah, summertime. It's a time of hammocks and picnics, barbecues, kids making lemonade stands. It's a time to unwind from the grind of the school year and all that goes along with that. But it never fails that as so many look longingly forward to the summer and potential travel, spending time with friends, the summer weekends begin filling up quickly. Before we know it, it feels like a grind. Our next guest is here to give us some tips on how to best enjoy the summer months. She's a personal life coach, and she works with people on changing negative thought patterns into those that serve the most for a happy and fulfilling life. Please welcome with me to the show, Heather O'Neill. Good morning, Heather. How are you? Good morning, Len. I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you so much for asking. So unlike the song, you say there is a cure for the summertime blues. <laughs> I think so. I think there are just some little kind of tricks and things we can do to kind of make the most of our time during the summer. And uh, the first thing that I, I tell people, and, and, and this is something I, I recommend in any situation, or season, if you will, in this instance, mm -hmm. but um, just kind of get clear on what you want out of something. So, you know, it's it's it seems every summer, you know, I know this happens to me, and I'm like, oh, the weekends are filling up, and I'm like, the summer's flying by, and so this summer, I set an intention that my summer was going to be a nice, leisurely, calm, slow summer. Relaxed. And it has been, but because I set that intention, I knew how I wanted to feel about it, and when I, when I kind of get clear on how I want to feel about it, then I can get in touch with that feeling. And then we're also more likely to choose actions that kind of support what we want out of a situation. So I think it's important to kind of keep your attention on your intention. <laughs> right. I get that. Now, what if your friends and your family are like, let's do this, let's do that, let's do this? Well, I think if it's something you are into and that's fun for you and that will, you know, serve your time well, then, then go for it. But I think if it's stuff that you don't really want to be doing, that, you know, it's absolutely okay to say no to things. I, I heard a, an interview with Judith Orloff a couple weeks ago, and she said, no is a complete sentence. And I thought that was just so brilliant and so true. You know, and I think obviously we don't want to disappoint our loved ones and our friends and our family, but, you know, they're not going to stop loving us. If we say no, if we're not honoring our own time, then other people won't either. So, you know, if somebody asks you to do something and, and geez, even if it's a, a party or something that, you know, well, it sounds like it should be fun, but, you know, really inside I'm just, I'm not feeling it. I, I'd rather stay home and relax with a good book than, you know, by all means, it's, it's okay to say which choice is going to feel better for me and then choosing that. And we're speaking with life coach Heather O'Neill, and she's teaching us how to not get the summertime blues. So why do you think, Heather, it's so hard for people to say no sometimes? I think people don't want to disappoint others. And, you know, I think it's very nice that we feel, you know, compassion and love for people. But, you know, if you, if you kind of flip that around, too, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to feel like I'm responsible for making somebody do something that they don't really want to do. So, you know, if everyone's kind of respecting their own, you know, desires and their own, you know, needs and wants to have their own experience, then, you know, it becomes kind of, it becomes okay. It's, it's you know, it's okay to, to do what, what makes you happy and what you want to do. And that's not to say that, you know, sometimes, you know, we put our, our, our loved ones, our children, you know, we put their needs ahead of ours. And that's, that's okay, but it's not okay all the time. You say stay in the moment. What exactly yeah. does that mean? What I mean by that is that you are truly focused on what's presently going on for you and you're not, you know, worried about something that's, that may or may not happen in the future. You know, I, my, my son's starting kindergarten in the fall. Mm -hmm. And the other day I got so caught up in thinking about, oh, what's it going to be like? How's he going to deal with it? It almost became anxiety producing for me. And I stopped myself and I, I was like, you know, this is, this is not my here and now. And I have a great little exercise to do that. And it's just to, to take in your environment when you need to kind of get yourself present and literally, you know, look at nature or, or if you're with people, you know, just really focus on them, pay attention to what they're saying and what they're doing and kind of pull yourself back into the present moment. And then you're, you know, you're, you're really enjoying the here and now, and you're not, you know, li living your time in, in the, in the past or the future. Well, I know some people that 
very much stress about what's going to happen in the future or worry about things that happened in the past, how would you suggest to somebody like that to try and just let that stuff go to not stress them out so much? Because it seems like to me that is the main source of their stress, worrying about what's going to happen that they can't possibly predict or worrying about something that already happened that they can't possibly change. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's, it's, you know, every, if you look at things like staying present, you know, every moment is new for us and that, you know, we are not our past and we are not our circumstances, but that we can be new in, in any moment. And when you are, you know, kind of focusing on that or focusing on growing or focusing on being a better person, you can look at your past choices and say, you know what, I wouldn't make that choice today. So I'm going to let myself off the hook for that because I wasn't, I wasn't the same person yesterday as I am today. And I don't need to hold myself accountable and, and tie myself down to my past because that's what it is. It's past. It happened already. And I think also as far as future events go, you know, that, that's, that's the root of anxiety, thinking about how something may or may not play out. And, you know, we don't have control over other people. Right. So what I recommend to folks is to just is to get in touch with yourself, to get to know yourself, to know, honor, and love yourself, and to know how you want to feel, um, you know, out of situations, to kind of just be clear on what you want out of stuff and how you want to feel. Because when you're more in touch with yourself, you're less, dependent on a specific outcome that may depend on somebody else's actions. So what tips do you have for us to connect with what makes us happy? Well, I, I, th I have a, a very easy, a simple exercise that I recommend to, to clients, and it's just to sit down and write a list and, and make a list of things that you enjoy doing. And I think sometimes as adults, we can kind of lose touch with that. We're not we're not thinking about that often. We're thinking about, you know, like you said, the past and the future and our work and our kids and, mm -hmm. you know, our, our chores and all this stuff that we forget that we are allowed to take time to get in touch with what we enjoy and what, what brings joy into our lives. So sometimes I ask people, well, you know, what makes you happy? What do you like to do? And sometimes it honestly stumps people. So I say, write a list. And if you don't know where to start, Think about things that you enjoy to do as a kid, because honestly, most of those things you can still enjoy now, but we forget that. You know, I think summertime's a great time of the year to even get reconnected to the things you like to do, whether it's reading or going hiking or just relaxing on the beach, going out dancing, you know, whatever, whatever it is. But I, I say make a list and, and add to that list, and it's, it's written down. It's something it's, you can look at. It's in your vision on a daily basis, and add to it as often as you can. And, it, and then I recommend to folks to make a commitment to spend 20 minutes every day doing something on your list. Okay. We get to feeling like we can't make ourselves a priority, but what we forget is that when, when we do make ourselves a priority, when we're operating from our best and our happiest selves, that's actually the best gift that we can give to the people around us. Well, that sounds fantastic. She's life coach Heather O'Neill. Heather, where can people go and find your tips and uh, maybe connect with you? Uh, people can go to heatheroneillcoaching.com, and that's H-E-A-T-H-E-R-O-N-E-I-L-L coaching.com. And if people would like to follow you on the social media, is that possible? Uh, they can. They can look up Life Coach Heather on Facebook. Perfect. Heather O'Neill, Life Coach. Thank you so much for coming on the show this morning. I really, really appreciate it. Len, thanks so much for having me. Have a wonderful day and a wonderful summer.